Teilhard de Chardin's masterwork, The Human Phenomenon, focuses on one subject, humanity as situated in an evolving universe. This presentation is inspired by and builds upon Teilhard's essential vision. The first English translation of the book was published in the 1950s under the title The Phenomenon of Man. A new translation from the original French by Sarah Appleton Weber included stylistic and substantive corrections and was published in 2021 under the corrected title The Human Phenomenon. Early in the book, Teilhard notes that there is no such thing as a pure fact. All experience, he says, as soon as we attempt to formulate it, is inevitably caught up in a system of hypotheses. Teilhard calls this system of hypotheses an aura of subjective observation. The aura might remain unnoticed within a limited field of observation, but in the case of a vision that extends to the whole, our web of presuppositions, colors, and constraints what we can see. Another way of saying this is that when we attempt to look at the ultimate big picture, we are inevitably telling ourselves a story. And the story we tell will determine how we see, what we see, what we will do, and how we will do it. Teilhard's The Human Phenomenon is his attempt to craft a story of the whole of cosmic and terrestrial evolution in all its dimensions, spiritual as well as scientific. To understand humanity's unique position in the cosmos, we will first look into the distant past of life's origins and then trace the unfolding of life up to the present, and finally try to glimpse into the future. Paraphrasing and expanding upon Teilhard's vision, we will look at the story in distinct phases or chapters, each covering a given span of cosmic time and cosmogenesis. The first chapter starts with what a lot of people call the Big Bang. I prefer to call it the original yes. In this presentation, the building blocks of evolution are represented by simple geometrical symbols, representing realities from subatomic particles up to the human. The magenta dots within each element represent what Teilhard called the inner, or the within, or consciousness. The black curve represents the increasing physical complexity of the universe through the course of cosmic evolution. The parallel magenta curve represents the increasing complexity of the within, a dimension of cosmic evolution that is fully as real as the increase of physical complexity. As Appleton Whipper says in the introduction to her translation of The Human Phenomenon, our primary purpose in reading Teilhard must be to translate ourselves, the readers, to translate ourselves through the vision of the book, to translate ourselves so that in passing through the sequence of cosmogenesis, biogenesis, and noogenesis, our vision may be transformed into what it must be in order for us not simply to survive, but to be fully alive. And so we begin with the universe in its earliest stages. Nothing in the universe is static. As Teilhard puts it, the universe is a mass in transformation, giving rise to ever more complex forms. This applies not only to its individual parts, but to the universe itself. A collective reality is more than the sum total of its parts. It has a mysterious unity and active power in itself, a birth, an unfolding, and a passing into something new. We are a part of this story. This is our story, and it's only just begun. If we know how to look at the universe, we see ourselves everywhere we look. And if we know how to look at ourselves, we see all the stuff of the universe 
in ourselves. To grasp Teilhard's vision, we must go beyond the dualism of so much of modern Western thought, which claims that matter and consciousness are completely separate from one another, or even worse, that only matter exists and consciousness is an illusion. We can call this the materialist superstition. With Teilhard, instead of dualism, we speak instead of an evolutionary monism, meaning that the series of emergences toward greater complexity involves matter and consciousness, the without and the within or the inner. The materialist superstition looks only at the without and does not even recognize the existence of a within. From that point of view, the direction of the universe, if there is a direction, is governed primarily by the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that in any operation that issues in an increase of physical complexity, some portion of the available physical energy in the universe is rendered no longer usable. In other words, a certain portion of the available physical energy is effectively lost. This is the definition of entropy, which is the measure of disorder in the universe. And the materialist doctrine says that the tendency of the universe is toward maximum entropy. Maximum entropy is achieved by a distribution that exhibits the highest probable randomness, which is the opposite of organized complexity. Entropy seems to tell us, Teilhard says, that the destiny of the universe is a reversion into ultimate dispersal. But Teilhard insists that this picture is radically incomplete because it considers evolution only in terms of physical matter and physical energy. But the universe has an inner aspect that is as deeply fundamental as the physical. The universe has a within. When we take the within into account, Teilhard says, evolution tells us that the universe will not find its stability and final end in its decomposition. But if the universe holds together at all, it is, so to speak, from above. Something is drawing our universe not only toward greater complexity, but also toward ever greater consciousness. The materialist superstition does acknowledge physical processes of increasing complexity, but considered only in terms of their physical aspect. But Teilhard insists that what we really see before us is a process of increasing complexity consciousness. What is characteristic of mineral species, like rocks, Teilhard says, is that they are closed in on themselves. They can grow and expand only by sticking to one another and linking together atom to atom without fundamentally combining or uniting. In this way, regular groupings are born whose composition may be highly advanced, yet does not exhibit any centered unity. There is simply a juxtaposition of relatively uncomplicated atoms or groupings of atoms in a geometrical lattice. And so, possibly, a physicist and geologist can do their work while considering only the without, perhaps even denying that there is anything else. But the biophysicist and microbiologist working on the border between physics and biology have reason to wonder about the implications of the spontaneity exhibited by even the most primitive virus and bacteria. The botanist finds it difficult to assume that there is no interiority in plants. Since Teilhard's time, we have learned a vast amount about how trees communicate with one another and how even slime molds are capable of solving certain kinds of problems. And the within becomes impossible to ignore for those who study seriously the behavior of insects and animals. 
And finally, of course, the within is completely impossible to deny when we reach the level of the human. Each of us directly experiences the within. And even the act of denying consciousness would be an act of consciousness. Obviously, the within of elemental matter and the within of a human are not identical. For just as there is an evolution of the without, there is also a continual evolution of the within. So what is the energy that drives this continual evolution? To understand energy in relation to the within and the without, Teilhard identifies two components of energy. First, what he calls tangential energy. This is the external aspect of energy, which links each element with all other elements on the same level of complexity. Tangential energy, which is also to say physical energy, causes elements to group together, to interact, to affect one another in terms of physical laws. But physical interactions are only one dimension of cosmogenesis. Cosmic evolution also involves synthesis and transformation, changes of state, which is to say, emergences. Teilhard uses the term radial energy for the component of energy that links elements center to center in a way that draws them not only to interact, but to undergo changes of state toward ever greater complexity and consciousness. Gravity is an example of tangential energy. In the earliest stages of terrestrial evolution, subatomic particles are drawn together by their tangential energy to interact with other particles. Gradually, physical conditions reach a kind of threshold state, and then, under the influence of the radial component of energy, the particles enter into a process of transformation. And with a sudden change of state, a sudden emergence, a new form of reality appears, the atom. This same process repeats on successive levels of complexity consciousness, gradually giving rise to the first living cells. Since Einstein, we know that matter and energy are two aspects or forms of the same basic reality. Teilhard states further that matter and consciousness, the without and the within, are likewise two aspects of the same basic reality. And this basic reality is not stable and unchanging, but is rather in a constant state of cosmogenesis or becoming, evolving continually toward greater complexity. The original yes is a continual, ongoing yes. At the very beginning of terrestrial evolution, a great mass of matter stabilized at just the right distance from its mother star to receive moderate radiation. This mass begins to roll in upon itself to take shape. It coils up within the closed surface of a sphere. There is a proliferation of changes of state or emergences. As the planet begins to take shape, there is first only a molten metallic sphere in which only the simplest forms of dissociated matter can exist. This is the barosphere. The surface of the barosphere cools to form a thin, rocky skin, the lithosphere. There is further cooling and the emergence of the hydrosphere, the fluid layers of the Earth. Here, water, ammonia, and carbon dioxide gradually combine and group themselves in long chains around the carbon atom, forming ever larger and more complex combinations. Something is about to burst out upon the early Earth, and this something is life.